Hello everyone, welcome to today's stream. Today, I will be recreating one of the games from my childhood in Blender, because now we can. The game is called Bloom's Tower Defense 5. You may have heard of it. It was very popular back in, I don't know, 2010? It's still around. So I'm just planning on recreating it because I was like, oh, Geometry Nodes can do this. And, uh, yeah. Just one day I had the rant, semi-random idea of, oh, I should recreate Blooms in Blender. So I'm gonna do that. I even got the soundtrack going, which hopefully I don't get copyright claims for that. I don't think I will. But I'm just gonna make a very, very rough outline of this with a line. I'll refine it later. Let me... Yeah, so I'm making the track for the balloons to go on, and then the balloons will be dynamically popped by the monkeys, which I need to uh, make really, really soon. There's that, that's... this needs some work, obviously. And the soundtrack is... I, I forgot how good the soundtrack is. Let's scale this part up. I can modify this later, so I think I will. Uh, let's put that up there. That up there, that up there, that right over here. I think that's pretty good. This one loop just needs to be a little bit more accurate, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Which is... Uh, cutting out these, but no. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to... I'm going to make these balloons be instanced on the line and make the line go burr. So I think, how am I going to do this? Hmm. Okay. I need to see how procedural I want this to be and if I want this on, like, this line, which I think I will. Okay, so... I need to first make some points, and then I need to add in a simulation in output and input. This is where most of the tech will be, but we will see. So this line we need to convert into a curve, mesh to curve, and then... Hmm. I need to add in an age parameter. Well, I need to make the balloons go across the path, and that I could put in new balloons over time, and then all that. So this will be a little bit, I don't know, tricky, but I'll try to make it as easy as possible. So I'll just make an age parameter. Yeah. The named attribute. A attribute, not attribute. Attribute. So, geometry, join geometry. This will be a little bit, you know, complicated at the beginning, but that's because I want this to be as robust as possible. Even though, you know, it'll just be one, for one Twitter post and that's it. Actually, yeah. Hmm. Now let's do this the simple way. Yeah, we're doing it the simple way, not the complex way. Okay, mesh to curve, and then we're going to sample, uh, where's the sample curve node? Uh, there we go, sample curve. So this will be the curve input. And then the position will set to the balloon here, the balloon point. So there we go, we should see that this point is right here, and if we do this, it goes along the track. Just like that. I'm going to make it the length. And then I'll add in like, I don't know, 100. 
of these. And then I'm going to have the index. And then I'll add to that over time. I'll make it so that it takes... Oh, no, wait. I want this on the factor. So that'll take... Let's say... 250... Frames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the scene time node, and then I need to divide it by 250. So that it'll take 250 frames for a balloon to go from one side to the other. Here we go. Is it working? It is. Okay. So now, uh. Yep, there we go. And if I divide this, we could get more on the track at once. There we go. I should probably also make it so that they start from the beginning. Or subtract, and then zero. Oh, the curve is inverted. Okay. So I simply have to reverse curve. There we go. Or maybe add. Hmm. Well, the balloons are traveling, so that's that's the good part. Just don't know why they're acting a little bit weird. So they should just start and then end. They shouldn't be, you know, like all throughout there. Maybe if I multiply this by negative one, it'll work? Question mark. Negative one. Hmm. And also, I'm going to instance the balloons on the points just so that we can see them in the rendered view. And where's the balloon? Let's put that in there. Let's bring it up. Bring it here. Uh, it's hard to keep this stuff organized. This is the simple way, you know, semi-simple, I'm overcomplicating it, as I usually do. Let's raise it up. I also need to offset these just a little bit, like a by a random value, just so that they don't clip, like you see there. So let's random value this, and just make it so that's like 0.1 on just the z-axis, and I'll randomize the seed. So that's just so that it doesn't... Right, okay, it's not clipping. Right? Like, I don't know... Okay, that only happens... Ah, okay. When all those are on screen. Okay. I should also delete these if they're not on screen. Well, we'll see. Why is it working all of a sudden? Oh, that's why. Okay. So the balloons are too big. Let me scale it down a good amount. I think they're supposed to be a little bit higher. Yeah. Should they be a little bit higher? Yeah. Let's make it so that there's more on screen. Maybe let's make it so that it takes 400 frames. Just so that, yeah, a little bit slower. There we go, so there's the working, finally, working node set up for that. That took longer than it should have. Control J for frame, Control J for frame. Let's see, we're 10 minutes in, and you know, that, that works. Okay, 
and then this part will be a frame because that's the this is say the rendering side of it and in the middle we'll need the simulation part but that is in the future now i need to whoops i need to set up the dart monkey so i need to separate this guy from the image so let's go and just have the plain old dart monkey here ah uh, the classic the classic Maybe I could separate it using the shader editor instead of needing to, you know. Hmm. I really don't want to have to rotoscope this. I'll just do a little... Hmm. Just chop off the corners. Looks like I might have to. Oh, no. Let's just, you know, chop off a little bit. Just make it a little more close. And then maybe I'll rotoscope it later. As, you know, a final, kind of final detail. You know, I, I'm just gonna... Yeah, let's try it in the shader editor. So this part, let's separate RGB. Separate color. There we go. RGB, and I'll select only the stuff that is really, really green. Like that. Hmm. Or let's separate it by the hue. And then try to find the correct hue for this. That works. So I could plug that into the alpha. Let's make that constant because that's what the alpha clip does. There we go. Look at the output. Ah, and we need to invert this. Now those ones, yeah, I should also make it so that if it's too dark, I'll use a just a greater than node. Or, wait a second. Like, there's some errors there, but I think that's okay. <laughs> and then there's just the outline. Saturation. Can I separate it by saturation? Will that work? It will not. Okay. So, hue. Oh yeah, I could just have a greater than, or a less than. Less than? Simple enough. There we go. So I just want the green out of there. Now the little bits there, that's... I could just literally block that in later. But for now, that's gonna annoy me if I don't fix that right now. So let me go and just do a very simple, here we go. If the value is lower than 0.1, I'll mix this to white so that it'll be opaque. There we go. Pretty much perfect separation. Oh wow, it separated all of them almost perfectly except for that guy. Yeah. Okay. So it separated those ones perfectly. Okay, that's good enough. Let's make sure that guy is centered to the world. Let's see, 15 minutes. Okay, that's... Okay, all right timing. So now's the time where we make a geometry node editor. I'll make it so that at every vertice in here, I'll instance new. I'll instance the monkey. Instance on points. Let's make this uh, dart monkey 001. We should see. Yep, there's the dart monkey. I'm going to lower the map so that all these are on the level, but the map is just a little bit lower. Okay, let's make this like 0.1 lower, not, not too low. 
But there we go. Now, if I copy this vertice, I could place a dart monkey wherever I want in the scene, which is good. That's what we want. Um, okay. Now I need to make them point towards the closest balloon. So I'll label these track balloons. And these will be, what are these? Mon uh, monkeys. Monkeys, there we go. So we go into the monkeys, we bring in the track balloons. And now we need to change the instances to points. There we go, so that we can see here, there's a point where all the balloons are. Now we need to make the dart monkeys point towards the closest one to them. So we use a geometry proximity, or prox, there we go. Set this two points, there we go. And then we use a subtract node, we subtract that from the position to get the kind of angle vector, I guess that's called. And then a align, Euler to vector node. Let's see. And then we put that into a vector and then this into the rotation. And set that to the y value. So now we can see, very similar to the game, the monkeys point towards the balloon that is closest to them. Very nice. But now we need to do something that actu actually requires the physics, which is throwing the dart. And I just realized I did not download the dart uh, art for that. Uh, the one thing I forgot to get. Yeah, so far this is working well. I should set up the camera so that I could snap back to it whenever I need to. Let's bring this up. 10 meters above the scene. There we go. And yeah, we could keep it in perspective for the time being. In balloons, the two edges are cut off. You know, there, there's nothing there. So, hmm. Actually, this should be one by one for the Twitter post. Or 1080 by 1080. Let's zoom this in a bit. Man, there's a... Uh, uh, way too much free space here. So maybe I will make this the proper ratio. Which is 2 by 3? I forget. Let's go and change it up until it looks correct. So let's bump that up until it's like 800 by 1000. Yeah, that's not quite right. Yeah, that should be 1,200. That's almost correct, but I think it's good enough for now, even though... Oh, yeah, 1,250. There we go. Now it fills up the frame as it should. Okay, now what we need is... Hmm. Make these monkeys fire darts. Now, how do we do this? Hmm, this will be a little bit tricky. Because I need to get... Okay, I think I need to store some data. Yeah. So I'm going to store the angle data. Store named attribute. I'll label this, er, yeah, vector data. That's the direction vector that the monkey is currently pointing in. Let's do named attribute. Let's just plug that into there just so that these are in sync. But now that I have that data, I can make it so that particles are fired from the monkeys according to the vector. So yeah. Yeah, this will this is going to be the most interesting part of this uh this scenario. So let's do this. Let's bring the monkeys into here and make the instances two points. There we go. But then, hmm. We need to make it so that points get fired from there every couple frames. 
if there is, um, yeah, how do I do that? So the monkeys are there, but then stuff only gets fired if a balloon is in range. So I need the uh, track balloons in here as well with a proximity. So proximity, switch that to point. So the distance is less than, let's say, let's just make the range 0.5, then a dart will be fired. Yeah. So let's separate geometry. Let's see, only the ones that are within the range will be joined into the, the simulation. So simulation input, simulation output. Let's do that. This is going to be very weird when it first starts out. So we need a geometry, join geometry, so that these particles are introduced. There we go. So only the particles, which I'm converting the monkey into the dart particle and then firing it, just because that's easy to do. But then we use a set position, and then we get the named attribute, oh, something go wrong not yet okay which is maybe vector yeah, vector and I really hope that the attribute stays in the particle after the the conversion that happens there or else things will not be good uh oh back balloons and then yeah, those work. Here's the other one. Oh, okay, yeah, that's why. I need to normalize. So it is working. Normalize then scale so that it uh I don't know, let's make that point one. Uh, did the attribute, does the attribute not carry over? No, it should. Yeah. An instance? There's one way to see if this if the instances are the problem, and that is to make it so that the monkeys just go there. Hmm. It's not that. So I'm very curious as to why it's not being offset. I'm doing something wrong. Because it only keeps them in there. Hmm. Look how many particles are being spawned in at the moment. Because I never made it so that they'll be deleted. Let's look at the spreadsheet to see exactly what is going wrong in here. So we can see there is only, oh, one. Simulation input, simulation output. Where's the problem? just make it so that a point is added each part of the simulation the simulation node just isn't working I 
may do need to save and refresh this because, uh, yeah. Okay, let's save and refresh. Save as uh, 3.5 balloons. Yeah, this may be a bug. Now open, open. Hmm. Plane. Well, that's not doing it, then I'm doing something wrong. Oh, wait. For some reason, these are not... Yeah, these are not working. Simulation. I'll put in simulation. Okay, now it's working. Huh. Oh, I added in the output, the input, and then the output first? I don't know. Okay, so it wasn't necessarily a bug. It's just that geometry nodes doesn't make it work unless you add in the things in the right order. So it's kind of a bug, kind of not. Okay, let's add in the monkeys again. Let's go back to the dart, uh, dart sim. There we go. So if we join this into here, we should see. Please work. <laughs> Oh, and we need a connected to Alpha. There we go. It's working now. Yep. Now the darts, in quotes, are being thrown out at the right time. Now I just need to make it so that they are thrown out at intervals. So, hmm. I'm surprised that this is uh, working already. I think I'm going to look up the the balloons dart dart image. Let's see images. I'm getting this on the side. Okay, let's try saving the image. Let's make this dart. Save as. I need to import images as planes. Let's go into there. Where is Dart? There we go. There we go. Now that Dart is looking a little green because I, the shader is a little messed up. Let's go and fix that. Oh, and the alpha is fake. Oh. I thought the alpha was real. Well, that's unfortunate, but I think I can fix it. Let's make this alpha clip and let's just make this emissive. Then set that to zero, no specular whatsoever. So that's only emission in alpha and let's make the math so that if it's greater than Let's try to make it so that. Hmm. Uh, let's separate hue saturation value. Separate color. Hue saturation value. Let's see. Okay, that, so that does that. Does it does that? Man, it doesn't want to make it easy on me. Okay. So what if? We take the value and then we subtract saturation. Okay, no, I think that'll work. We just had to do that. And then that. And now we plug that into the alpha and now it should be separated, even though I need this to be less than. And let's switch this from linear to cubic just so that the edges are a little bit more feathered. There we go. So for those of you who are watching, that's how you deal with the images that have fake alphas. It won't work in all scenarios, just just this one, I'm pretty sure. There we go. So let's bring this star over to here and then scale it down. Uh, let's straighten it out a bit. There's still a little bit of weird alpha going on, so let's 
do that. I'm also going to make it so that if the value is greater than... Oh, wait a second. Oh, that's gray. It is gray. Hmm. Let's try a compare. Let's see. I just want to get the highlight there. So let's uh, make this like 0.1. Or yeah, no, let's make this 0.1. So that we only select there, but the outline is like that as well. It just doesn't want to make it easy on me, does it? Hmm. Oh wait, there's the checker and then there's that checker. It works well enough. There we go. Outline, eh, it's fine. Like I, if if I really wanted to, I could just manually separate that and then turn off the alpha. But I think for now it's good. And now we have this and the dart monkey doing its thing. I should make it so that this face is downwards so that it is accurate. It's eh, I don't need to do that. Okay, so with the dart sim, now I need to go into the geometry node editor. And I need to instance the dart on there. So where's the dart? Let's bring this in. Bring this over to there. Set it to... Okay. So it is working. We can see the darts are being thrown at super monkey levels. <laughs> so I do, I do need to reduce that. Let's put that in there for like the, the input and all of that. That part is unnecessary. But we need to do the align order to vector since we still have the vector data. Let's do align order to vector rotation. We need to set this so that it only affects the z-axis. Plug this into there and we should see uh, that that does that, but it's the opposite. So we need to just rotate it by 180 again. So there we go. The darts are being thrown. Let's scale them up a bit. <laughs> Uh-oh. How come uh, that monkey's not throwing out darts? Oh, it's not within range. There we go. Ah, okay. I need to also delete the balloons if they're not around yet. So you need to do this. Simply, I need to use a equal to uh, 0.5 and then 0.5. So if it's not equal to the 0 to 1 range, they will not exist yet. There we go. And now let's put in the limiter for the dart sim. So that, hmm, let's just do a, I need to use an and node. So instead of deleting them twice, I just use an and. Let's have this be random. And then have the seed be the same time so that it, it same time so that it updates every frame so that it's randomized, yada yada. So this makes it, on average, every 1 out of 10 frames, a dart will be thrown. Huh. Oh, wait, I forgot to... Yeah. This will be... Yeah. We'll use a switch node. So that if they're... Yeah, if it's out of range, so if it's greater than one, it'll just point in the z-up direction. Yeah. So 
So if it's out of range, the monkeys will just face up. Yeah. <laughs> so for the darts, uh, those are working, but now I need to add in the simulation for the balloons, which this one should be fairly simple. Let's save. Uh, simulation output, add that first. Now simulation input. There we go. Now this will be simple. We just need a delete geometry so that if a dart gets within range, let's set this up so also instances to points because the, uh, the darts are instances, but the thing won't read that. So let's do a proximity. I may need to fancy this up in case the darts go too fast to be registered. These ones want to fire at the center if there's nothing there. So I need to do that bug fix that I've done before. It's not the hardest thing in the world to do. But yeah, so if the distance is less than 0.1, it'll delete the balloon. And I need to do the bug fix once again. So let's do a join geometry. So this bug fix is that since the distance is less than 0.1, it'll delete. If there's no darts on the screen, the balloons will just assume that since there's nothing, no distance data, and then they all get deleted. So I need to put a point just very far away so that it'll be like, oh, there's, uh, there's something there. Okay. So something is still a little off. Hmm. Oh, that's what's up. Dang it. I didn't think about this, but... Hmm. Yeah, so I can't do the dynamic deletion. Or I could mark it for deletion and then delete them after the fact. Yeah, that, that's the best way to do it. Unless I want to make it entirely procedural. So what I'm going to do is store a named attribute. This will be delete. And that's how you spell delete. Let's make it a boolean. So that they'll be marked for deletion, but they're, they'll still exist. Right? Will that work? Actually, no, I don't think this will work. Yeah, because they don't, they don't want to move. Uh, it's a little... I think I need to just set the position. Hmm. Okay, so that makes the one particle that is there move. then I can just delete them in the tree now instead of, you know, doing that. Okay. Because the, the reason that happens is because when the mesh goes in, this mesh, it doesn't change it after the fact. I need to change it while in the simulation because uh, of reasons. So if I did it the original way, What's the reason now? Oh, that's why. Because all of them are right there, yeah. Okay. So I need to also add, so that the monkeys do not fire at the balloons that haven't spawned in yet, I just need to move the balloons that are, haven't moved yet up a ton. So I need to do that equal to thing again. So that if it's not equal to 0.5 and 0.5, then I'll just add like 10 to the uh, position value so that the monkeys can't reach them. 
So let's do a multiply X, Y, Z. We're doing bug fixing, folks. I'm creating, I'm literally creating a game live <laughs> that took the developers months or years. Well, I, I would say months to, or weeks, probably the original. It took them weeks to make. I'm trying to do it in an hour. There we go. Oh. It looked like it tried deleting one, but it just didn't want to delete. Uh, how's the deletion, buddy? Is it working? Hmm. I wonder why they're deleting, but then they respawn. They're deleting, but they're respawning. That should not be happening under any circumstances. Oh, I know why. Ah, tons of annoying things keep coming by. So the reason that that happens is because I need to store the indexes. All this, this would be a lot simpler if I just revamped this so that was, you know, I could keep adding in balloons procedurally. But because there's an index here, yeah. Index or integer ID. Plug this into there. This should fix that part up. Okay. There we go. It's working. Okay, it is working, but it should be, you know, a little bit better than the, the current version because there, you know, there was a host of bugs that were a bit of a problem. I think the monkeys are too small, so I need to make them a bit bigger. There we go. That's more feeble for the folks watching at home. Let's, uh, let's also, I need to move the assets into their own kind of collection. So let's move these over to the side. Move them over. There we go. Let's move these two assets. There we go. And I could switch out the map if I really wanted to. I would have to, you know, make a new curve for that, which isn't difficult. So let's lower the this map by 0.1 again. So there we go. It works. The only problem is the balloons are too, uh, <laughs> they get deleted after one pop, which I can change. So, uh, let's see. I can do that by going into the... the track balloons thing, and I'll do kind of what I did before. I'll give all of these a health, an initial health value, and then something that, or yeah, no, how many times they've been hit. So I could do that by saying, just labeling this as hits. I, I'll set it to integer just so that it's like one, two, three, four, five. So that, here we go, each time a dart comes within range, it'll add one value to this counter. And then when the counter gets to say, I don't know, three or four, it will delete, let's see. The yellow balloons are level five. So if the hits are greater than, greater than or equal to, or yeah, greater than or equal to five, then they'll delete. So we should see here, it took just about five hits for them to go bye-bye. But now we could do something interesting with this, now that we have that hit data. So now that we do have this, let's label this hits, or let's get the attribute. 
so that we can see what happens. Instancer, let's label this hits. Now, if we look at this, we should see. There we go. We can see which ones get hit. And now we can change the color based on that. So I may do this manually. So that let's just do a math or equal to, yeah. Hmm. Let, let's just try changing the colors originally. So let's use a, oh, let's add in a hue saturation value node. There we go. So that, yes, these will get close to red and then they'll be gone. This is the lazy way to do it because they should be like, oh, do I do this? Because if it's if the hit is greater than one, then that means it should be a green balloon. So I would have to switch this to green. Like that. This is very, very funny. Or let's do a mix, mix RGB node, switch this to color, and then it'll switch if, let's say this is, yeah, if it's greater than one, it'll switch the color to green. Oh, but color, color gets rid of that as well. So we do just want the hue shift. If it's greater than that, this is actually kind of difficult to for me to, for my brain to process. Hmm. Oh yeah, there's a hue node right there. Oh, there we go. That fixed it. Okay, so if it, the hits greater than one, I'll switch it to green. If the hits are greater than two, they'll switch to. Oh wait a second. They'll switch to blue. Uh-oh. Why are you not switching to blue? Come on. Yeah, they switch to that, and since this is, oh, 1.5, and then, yeah, okay. So if it's greater than zero, there we go, it switches to that, and then that. And that's another problem. I need to make it so that it will not add to the counter one frame after it's been hit, or two frames. I'll, I'll have to check on that. Oh right, I need to make it so that the darts delete if they're within proximity of the balloon, because that's what happens. Oh! So that part isn't gonna be too big of an issue. But let's do this so that once again, If it's greater than two, it'll switch to red. There we go. Okay, the system works. I should probably make this so that this just mixes between an emission and a transparent. So let's add in a transparent node for the alpha here. we go. So I think my balloon's lore is accurate, but we'll, we'll have to see. So we need to go back into the dart sim, and then kind of copy what we had with the balloons one, so that when a dart hits a balloon, the dart, the, um, the balloon also gets deleted. Hmm. Right, yeah. Okay, I can do that. Let's move this back a bit. Let's see, how am I doing on time? It's, oh, okay. I was like, it's only been 30 minutes, but the clock updated. There we go. 
And sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat. Let's see. Is it the same process to make in 3D? Yeah, I could convert this to 3D very easily. Yep. Okay. So now I need to copy, let's see. I should probably also move all these into the uh, collection called Dynamics. Dynamics, there we go. Uh, let's go over to the Dart Stem and copy the, wait, wait, no, 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 the Track Balloons. So that if this, yeah, if it's in range, it'll delete. Let's bring this into the Dart Stem, there we go. So that if it's in range, it'll delete this, which hopefully it'll work. Oh wait, I need to make this balloon, <laughs> track balloon. So, boom. Okay. So it half works. Well, what if I put it before the moving? That might, that might fix that little bug. It works, okay. So I think this is pretty much fully functional. Okay. Nice, wow, okay. It works pretty much 100%. Like there still is some edits that I could make too in under an hour. Well, I made balloons to her defense in under an hour, given that I had, you know, the, the art uh, assets already. Let's move this over to here. There we go. Very, very nice. Yeah. So that's number two in the games that you can recreate in Blender. Uh, so I remade Minecraft TNT, and now I remade Balloons. Nice. I wonder, should I make it so that the Balloons health changes? I could edit that later. Yeah, with the with the balloons right here, I could do a few things. So I should give them an initial health parameter. So let's say, yeah, let's label this health. Health. I spelled that right, right? Yep. And I'll label that. I'll have that be five. So that now this time, whenever it hits, it'll subtract one from the health. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. That's a better method. So that with that, I can add in balloons of different health amounts. Yeah. So let's do that. Ch switch this out for health and health. Then subtract by one based on that. There we go. So now if I go into the shader editor, I just need to switch this up a bit. Uh, yeah, there we go. So let's label that health. Here we go. So, okay. So if the health is equal to, or no, these all need to be compare nodes, just so that's, yeah. Compare basically means, oh, if it's within this range, because we don't really have an equal node in there. Let's do that, that, and that. That, yeah. Equal to four, then that happens. If it's equal to three, that happens. If it's equal to two, or no. Yeah, if it's equal to four, three, one. Okay, yep, if it... Wait a second. Oh, and I need to fix the deletion process for the balloons. Okay. So if this is equal to zero, they delete. Oh, and this needs to be health as well. <laughs> Silly me. There we go. So that should work. Yep, it works. So now I could do more funny things with this. So I'm going to add in the age parameter like I was originally going to do. 
and this is going to affect this is going to make things quite a bit simpler so i'll add an age and then like this yeah this can be an integer it doesn't have to be it could be a flow or uh that but integer just makes it seem a bit simpler so that it's just one value that we can easily trace there we go so every frame one gets added but that also means that control j I can make the age, make it so that it goes along the track. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, now it's time to revamp this. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to delete all of that and then just plug that in there and make it so that one balloon gets joined into the fold. Yeah. So I was right in originally trying to make the balloons procedural. But now if I have the have this be the length. So that according to the age, let's multiply this so that it'll move along the track 0.1 meters over time. Ah, and as we can see, I need to reverse the curve again. So fun, right guys? We can see that the monkeys are having a terrible, terrible time because there's just way too many. And the fun thing is, I can, since I'm adding in the balloons, I can randomize the health value uh, per frame. Let's do that, and now let's put in the scene time. Here we go. Frame. There we go. So we should see a random amount. Yep, they have a random health value. Oh, oh, wait a second, what's happening here? That's way too many. Why are there so many being spawned in? Oh, I, I made it so that 100 would spawn in per frame instead of one. Okay, there we go. So let's, uh, let's make it so that the range will be, yeah. And now let's also make it so that only one spawns in every couple frames. So we need scene time and then a, let's see. Let's see if I could get this right first try. A divide and a fraction. Fraction makes it so it repeats. I'll have this be every four frames. And then an equal to or... The Wii Shop Channel theme. I'll, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, and if it's less than... Or no, we need to make this an equal to. Yeah, I should just play, you know, the um, Nintendo music. You know, Wii music. I'll end up in less copyright strikes. Actually, no, it's Nintendo music. They're going to come down like uh, no tomorrow. Actually, no. I think that was only one scenario where that happened. Okay. So here we go, one balloon. Nope. Okay, so I need to fix that. I didn't get it right the first try. Let's make it 0 0.01. Oh, and this, that was seconds. Okay, no, it did work. I just had the wrong input. But every four frames, or right, let's make it every 10 frames. One balloon gets spawned in. For some reason, that monkey just gets the, the short side of the stick. I need to make it so that the, the monkeys fire off their balloons. Um, art sim. Come on. Yeah, okay, let's do this. So instead of Whoop, that was the wrong one. Let's give these a, the random health again. Did one of them regenerate? I could make regenerating balloons because I made the health system. I don't need the ID, even though that... Okay, if that's going to keep repeating, that might not be good, so I may... Just go back to the balloons music. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the balloons music. Here we go. I may need to assign a random value per balloon. 
but for now this part is unnecessary. There we go. So see how much simpler this was when I did make it procedural, at least for the curve parameter part. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so sometimes, yeah, no, this was less nodes, making it dynamic. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, now, let's, um, what was I doing? All right, the, the, um... I need to get the this part right here. I need to copy it, bring it over to the dart monkey so that they fire at a constant rate. There we go. Come on, you can do it. I need to drag that instead of do that. Okay, there we go. So now they should fire at a random interval, but I also need to make it so that it's a random offset. So I'm just going to add random based on the ID. And value, let's make sure that the integer, there we go. Just so that the monkeys don't fire completely in sync. In the game, the monkeys have a counter from when they first see the balloon, but I could just replace this and then it would work just as well. Maybe I should make the darts faster. Because they seem a little bit slow. And they miss their target a few times. But let me go into the darts and... Oh. Let me clean this part up. I may put this on Gumroad, just because it's uh, for free, because, you know, it's licensed uh, stuff. Just so that people can look through it and, you know, pick it apart. If I do get a copyright strike, then that means I'll just um, switch out the art, but keep the unique original data. You know, the, the algorithm, shall we say. Okay. So for the dark sim, let's speed these up. So that's 0.3. Now if... Nope, that, that seems to be good. Here we go. I should probably also make it so that the, just like in the game, the balloons start off just a little up here. And I should probably also make it so that this monkey is down here. So that they don't pre-fire on the ones joining. <laughs> now let's place this guy here. Yep. That's pretty good. And I could also add in some, uh, some other monkeys. Like, this guy I think fires at twice the speed. So I think I could, you know, have different monkeys doing different things. I could add in the boomerang monkey and all of those, but those, those would take quite a bit of time, don't you think? This is a jam. It, it works, which I'm very happy. Wait a second. That just went down by two hits. Why did that go down by two hits? And why did that make... Wait, 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 wait. Something, Something's not right about this. When it hits a blue, it turns yellow? Oh, wait, I think I know why. In the shader editor... Uh, let's go to balloon. Let's see. Oh, right. I have nothing for the two. So that's two. Is there... Yeah, what's the color for three? Okay, that seems to be right. There we go. I could also make it so that the health determines the size. Hmm. Yep. 
I also need to make it so that there's a little explosion effect that happens if there is something in the proximity. Yeah. Yep. You know, the little pop effect. But that could be done later. Actually, I'm going to look that up if there is balloon pop art. I need to specify because that's a little too general. BTD5 balloon pop. can't find it. Eh, it's not too necessary for this. The main pull is just seeing, oh, a system, a game system working in Blender. Perfectly. Pretty much perfectly. And I just need to make sure that the balloons can go off screen. And I could have a health counter as well. I can make it so that if something goes, is if a balloon is in proximity to the end point here, the health goes down. So yeah, let, let me do that. So And I can actually borrow quite a bit of the code from there. Well, let me do that. Uh, what happened to the music? I closed out of the music. How dare I? Let's get that back up and running. Let's see. Well, uh, balloons music. Um, and of course there are ads. <laughs> Let's see, this is... Yeah, this is also a jam, but it'll only last for four minutes, so I gotta be fast. There we go, let's lower that a bit. Or maybe I'll be copyright struck for that. Sorry, folks. One second. Uh, BTD5 music. There we go. We're back. There we go. And autoplay is off. Very good. Okay, so now I just need to set up another thing here using the simulation node, simulation output, simulation input. So I'll just copy what I had before. So with the balloons, they have a health system and something that detracts from that health according to the proximity to a dart. So what I simply need to do is just copy all of this and move it to this point. And of course, this stuff doesn't copy because for some reason Blender does not, the control C function just doesn't like working. Okay. There we go. So I'll plug in the health function here so that the player health is 100 at the beginning. And then I'll use this for the balloons. Where are the balloons? Nope, not balloon. I need the track balloons. Huh? Where are they? Track. Okay. Oh, I put B for the, uh, for the thing there. Okay. So if it hits, it'll subtract the health. And then that value, I'll get an attribute statistic. So that I can get this attribute and, and then get it outside the, the geometry. Switch this to. Uh, it can only be float, which is a little odd, but it means the same thing. So the mean I could put into a value to string node. String node, there we go. Let's hide all that. Now let's do a text 
uh, let's see, string to curves, which is basically, you know, string to text. Curve instance, there we go, and let's fill the curve, make that fill. There we go with triangles, let's move this up. I'll need to set the material to something else. I also need to move, well, okay, let's move this to the top right corner. That's the bummer, like the, when I move the object, the, the sensor also moves. But I don't exactly want this to be, you know, right there. I, I could just transform this. Transform geometry. Yeah, I could just move this. After the fact. There we go, and raise it up a bit. And I need to set the material. Set material. Um, yeah, I'll just do that, and I'll set it to material. I'll make this an emissive red, or maybe just white. Right, yeah. Oh, and I need to do it after it's meshed. <laughs> there we go. Now I need to change the font to something a little bit more funky. A little more what you would see in balloons. Iris. Yes, yes, I, I should switch it to Papyrus. What's a good font? I could switch it to Wingdings. <laughs> I remember seeing those when I was in school. <laughs> I was like, ooh, this is funny. I don't know why it exists, though. Okay, let's just try something... You know, funky, but not too funky. Yeah, that seems funky enough. Oh, let's make sure this is center, or no, yeah, that needs to be like that. Uh, scale, or no, this needs to be on the other side, because that's where the balloons show up. Go and just make it bigger, move it over to the side. And I need this to be in the in the center. So that when it does reduce, you know, nothing bad happens. Okay, so now let's uh, let's overwhelm the, sy the system and see if it works. <laughs> It does seem like some of it's glitching out a little bit. Okay, let, let's slow this down. Seems like a whole, yeah, it seems like a whole lot of these just switched their, their data for some reason. So let's extend the lifetime. Yep, there we go. It does work. <laughs> we can see the lifetime going down very fast, and then zero, negative two. Yep, so that works. <laughs> very, very funny. Uh, shader editor. Or, yeah, we, I, I need to check what's happening with data here. Uh, balloons, where are the balloons? Okay, what's happening with the help? And I need to divide this so that I can see what's happening without it being so bright. Okay. Oh, that's what's happening. Okay, yep. I know what's happening. Oddly enough, I need to, yeah. The balloons are just having a hard time deciding which one should go up and which ones should be in front of the other. So I'm going to do what I kind of had before. I'm going to set random value to each balloon and uh, that'll decide, you know, where it goes. Oop. I'll have this be random, and the random will affect the clipping. So let's set that to float. I'll have a random value, which is a float over there. And then that random value, I'll just make it so that affects the offset. So named attribute, 
random, I'll multiply it by the vector and make it so that it just, you know. So that glitchiness should not be happening. Yep, it's consistent now. Little bug fixes here and there. Now each one has a unique value that uh, works, so it's nice. <laughs> I should move the... Whoop, I can't move the health physically because, you know. All that. I'll put that in a frame because that's, you know, what puts that there. And I'll put all this into a frame as well. So there we go. We can see the little components. Dare I say that this is better, easier to do than Unreal Engine. To, to set up this logic. I could, you know... I've, I'm not the best at Unreal Engine, so I could be very wrong, but... Yeah. I'll also put in a... Oops. Control c Control v I'll use a join... String... Or, no. A join... Join. There we go. Getting a little bit tired, folks, but... I don't think I'm ready to go just yet. Well, I can have this be health, and then just move it up a little bit. Scale it down, obviously, and then move it up. Is that necessary? I'm not sure. Well, I'll just keep it here. I may take it out for, you know, the final render. But we have a working health parameter. But accurately show how much health the user has. And I'll just leave that like that. Note setup is a little, just a wee bit ugly, but I can live with that. move this up a bit just to keep it a little pretty move it over move it over move it over there we go there we go okay I think this is good folks even though I think I should I do want to showcase the the health system but I should make it so that one spawns in like every two frames, just so that it's, you know, a little less bad. Oh, the poor monkeys are having a seizure because there's way too many there. Let's make it so that's every four frames again. I wonder. Can I make it so that I prioritize the first ones? I think maybe. Uh, yeah, I can. No, yeah, I, I can do that. So with these, for the, for the monkeys here, I can offset the position based by the either the health. So I can add. This will be a little weird. Actually, no, I'll just make it ignore the ones that are further away. Yeah. Since I we don't have nested loops, we can't see, oh, which is the... We can, I can only choose which one's the closest. Or, wait, there is the sample index node. Sample index? Does that give me... Or, no, 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 uh, the sample nearest. Sample nearest? No, that doesn't give me what I want. Okay, so th this is just what we're going to have to deal with. And actually, I could add a simulation into the monkey system so that they actually take time to rotate and they're not just, you know, instantly snapping everywhere. 
I think in the game they uh they snap that fast. Hmm. I don't know. I'll try. I'm gonna save. This is this is the good version. The effectively final version here. But I'm going to just do the last few modifications. Let's try another. Um... Oh, Comic Sans. <laughs> that could be good. The bold. No. Nah. It doesn't look. Um... That one. How does that look? Nope. Too basic. Old attack? Nope. That that's good. That kind of matches the the balloon's aesthetic at least a little bit. Until you know the things start going down and then it looks really really weird. I'll change that later. But yeah, for the monkeys, let's make it so that the yeah the vector gets changed over time. This will be very simple. Simulation output, simulation input, just like that. So that does that, but we just need to make it so that the previous vector also, well, I need to normalize it, but we add the two together, or maybe mix, I think, maybe effective. But we can see that it's, you know, it actually takes it into account. Let's use a mix so that I can decide which one is more weighty than that. Let's make it so that it prioritizes. Or wait a second. I need to, first of all, normalize first input and normalize this one as well. Ah, but I don't like how it snaps into position. So I need to get it, give it an initial vector. So that they kind of, yeah, they pick up over time. So normalizing these just makes it so that it's consistent, so that the physical different distance from the, the balloons doesn't make a difference for the rotation. And I'll make this a random value just so that these monkeys all have a random initial position uh, or orientation. They're all faced in different directions, which this feature is unnecessary, but it just, you know, makes it look a little less janky. I should probably make it so that the darts don't spawn inside of the monkey's face, possibly. <laughs> I need to move the, the dart monkey up. Wait, why does that move it down? Oh, is this inverted? Oh. That was inverted the whole time. So it looks like I just need to switch those around, and then that'll fix that. Oh dear. Yeah, what went, what went wrong? Why are these firing in that direction? Do I need to just make that negative? Okay, I need to physically rotate this 180. 180. Rotation. Okay, and I need to fix the thing that I did there. Okay. Little bug fixes here and there. So what was I doing? Alright, I need to move the monkey mesh up just a little bit. So that when a dart is thrown... Oh, yeah, where is the dart in comparison? So that when a dart is thrown, it is underneath the monkey. Whoa, what was that? Did a dart get thrown? Oh dear. Oh, I know what's happening. So the darts are being thrown in 3D space. Because I made it so that, you know, for the for the clipping thing that happens. There we go. Now this should make it so that the clipping stuff... Oh, nope. The clipping... 
starts to happen. Oh, that that's a bit of a bummer. Because I want the visual space space to be different, but the um the monkeys throw out the actual where the instances are located. So the darts get thrown in 3D space. That's that's very funny. So I just want to make it so that that clipping like that doesn't happen. So if I do 0.1, yep, that seems to be good. Or if I subtract 0.5, this should actually no. Good enough. But yes, this will work with 3D objects. And allow me to demonstrate. Let's make a cube with the. Uh, actually, no, let's just make this an, an icosphere. Now I need to, you know, change the UV map so that's, you know, where the where the balloon is. So that the shading is correct. And why is the balloon inverted? Rotation. Okay, nope, that fixed it. Dun, 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 dun. Let me project from view bounds. There we go. There we go. So now we can have 3D balloons doing their thing. So let me select the, the bottom vertice here. Pull it down. So that, you know, in theory, connected only, sharp. smooth. If I did want to get rid of the, you know, the original R and make it 3D, I could. So yes, Blender Balloons Tower Defense. I'll, I'll just separate that. Make that balloon. I'll make these Balloons, thin, plus track. There we go. So let's move this guy back over to here so that the assets are very nicely laid out right here. And I could make it so that uh, there are different classes of um, monkey. So I can make it so that the middle class right here fires uh, faster than the other ones. Or wait a second. I just remembered something. These monkeys only orient or when they fire? I forget. Like, they're supposed to snap to their positions, but only when something's in range. So it would be like this. But only... And only when they're supposed to fire? Okay, so... Okay, before I do anything rash, let's save. So let's go to... Where is... Okay, so let's go into Dart Sim. We have the thing so that only fires every couple of frames. But what if I made it so that the monkeys decided when they fired? So if I go into the Dart Monkeys. Come on. Oh, uh, Monkeys Sim. There we go. Let's paste that into here. So that we have a value which says fire. So that only, yeah. So I'll store that attribute which is labeled fire. And then float. So that, yeah. Hmm.
I need to make it so that every couple frames the fire value is true. Then if the fire value is true, then the monkey will switch target positions and then also fire. Yeah. Okay, so named attribute, which is fire. I need to make this an and node. So only if, oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. Or wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Uh, I'm having a, a hard time thinking about this. Okay, okay, okay. So that into that. But I'll only mix to the new position. Okay, yep, yeah, that makes sense. Both these values are true, then I'll mix. Excuse me. Yeah, where's the... Yeah, that should be working. Every couple of frames, the fire value is true. Which means... Yeah. Oh. Did I just really mess this up? And eh, no, it should switch to the new value if that stuff is true. You know, if it's less than? Okay, yep, I just need to switch that to less than. Now it switches and it fires, but I need to make sure that the darts only fire when the thing fires. So I just need a named attribute, which is labeled fire. So this will only fire when the monkey has orders to fire. There we go. That doesn't look as good. All right, let's reload the save. File open, don't save, open. There we go. I like it when you can see where they're thinking about looking. There we go, that's all. <laughs> and then the one, the one dart that just flies into oblivion. That's funny. And that's because just the value, the, the heights are just a little bit different. So we see stuff like that happen. Even though I should make it so that it can't go up. Um, yeah. Oh, voice crack. My apologies, folks. Let's make it so that they cannot fire up. Okay, and they can still hit. Good. Uh-oh. And, oh, right. I need to make it so that, um... When the balloons are, get to the end, they die, so that it doesn't make the health counter go down a ton. Because right now, if a balloon hits the uh, health counter, they, um, yeah, they keep subtracting from the value. either need to, you know, make it so that the balloons die when they reach the end, or come into, you know, proximity with the thing, so... 
yeah. So I would just need to make that an and, so that they'll delete once they hit the end. Oh, but wait a second, the, the health thing... You know what, it's fine. People will just be like, hey, the, the health counter isn't working, I'll be like, shh. would I make it so that it only counts at the first frame that it, it hits? Like, do I get the index of the object and then when the index changes, it it's like, oh, new thing. I don't know. Um, okay, well, oh, sorry for not looking at the chat. Oh, game making in Geonodes? Yes. Is this conceptual, or could this work in-game? Um, it only works inside Blender. I mean, in theory, or actually, no. It only works inside Blender with the experimental simulation nodes in Blender 3.5. Let's see, is EVNX going to be in 3.5? No. It says, uh, the Blender devs say, oh, probably. I just realized that the map's been upside down this entire time. But yes, um, Blender, uh, EV Next is coming in 2023. I think it's due to, and let's also, I, I'm gonna have to reverse the curve. So let's go and do that. It's because EV is waiting on some like dependencies with I believe Mac to get the, the new rendering system up and running. There we go. Okay, now, now that works. Okay. Let's reposition the dart monkeys to the thingy. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, they just look like they don't reposition because the, um, the simulation nodes. That's that's one low gripe about the simulation nodes. They um they they kind of freeze the first frame of this the uh, the monkeys so that or the mesh so that when you make changes they don't automatically update. I have to restart the sim. Yeah, I need to speed up the monkey change in orientation. Uh. Let, let's bring this monkey down a bit more so that he is also... Ooh, what was... Ooh, why was that one was so slow? It just fired and then absolutely no effort was put into it. It's not like it fired down, right? Okay. Let's uh, make the monkeys move faster to their target. There we go. And I feel like the rotation axis is a bit off, so let's show the origins. Right now, we're just in the polishing phase of this. So yeah, let's make it so that the monkey is more like that. And the dart, maybe I'll move over to the side a bit more. So that it looks like the monkey's actually throwing it. Now that's just in visual space, but you know, it, it makes it look right. Yep. I really want to make this bounding box square because it, this is annoying me quite a bit. Um, how, how would I make this square? Just do this, and then let's put go on the Y axis, and then delete that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's also do a little chop right here, have it so that it's on the y-axis, so that I can chop off that part. 
And this part I'll put right here, and this one I'll move down. There we go. That actually is a very good outcome, so that now I can see where everything is going. Let's uh, move this over a bit. And of course, well, okay, it's not the biggest deal. I just need to move that over there. There we go. I just need to do a little bit of that. And a little bit of this. There we go. Now, when I look at this, I can see where the darts are going without things, you know, looking weird. Okay, and let's also change the viewport display so that I can see what's happening a little bit better. So the monkeys, I will code to be little like or yeah I'll have them be that color and then the balloons I'll make red because they're active see, I want to let's just desaturate that a little bit so that it looks a little bit better there we go so now I can clearly see where are the acting actors where are the balloons and where the particles are going very nice. There we go. Let's see. Um, Eevee Nets is scheduled for 3.5. Uh, no, Eevee, Eevee's pushed back. Wait a second. Why did... Oh, the darts go through. And I ha <laughs> have to move around the, uh, the health. Where are you? I need to move around the kind of help thingy. Hmm. I could make this more accurate if I just place it like exactly where a balloon is going to be on one frame. Make it so that... So yeah, when that happens... I'll move it like right to the center where it will be so that it will like 0.9 there we go no nope, 0.09 because the balloons move actually no I need to make this like 0.4 is it just passing over and also I need to make the track a bit longer that and now I can take out whenever you you know mess with the indexes you know you can make it so that the curve has to be reversed and all that let's play the game again and then let's see oh good now the counter is working I just needed to make it so that the balloons would pass over it fast enough And now I need to move the, the health parameter to, you know, a place where it's visible. And not colliding with anything else in the scene. Let's put this uh, right over here. There we go. Let's make this, uh... No, I need, I need something, a better font. I think it needs to be italics. But that just looks too sterile. I need something with a bit of a bit of flair to it. And that was the same font I was just using. Okay. That that is also quite funny. Ink free regular. A little thin, but that does look like something the Blooms folks would do. Hey Cartesian, I was wondering if you could explain the name's attribute process to texture generate similar to how you did in your fabric formation code. Uh, the texture process. Uh, okay, I could do a side tangent on that real quick. 
do this. Let's just make it smaller. Let's also switch over to that for there to see if that looks better. Oh, and let's switch that to one and just change the, the size of that. There we go, and let's move this up. The texturing, the, the, um, the texture in Geonodes. You don't usually texture in Geonodes. Like in the fabric shirt formation thing, I transferred the UV maps to the instances. And then I just did the thing normal. Like if you watch yesterday's stream, day before yesterday's, you'll, you'll see the entire process for that. But you don't texture in geometry nodes. I usually transfer the UV maps to the instances if that's what's needed. Oh wait, I think, I think I know what you mean. Like, um, like you set the data in here, the named attributes in here, and then if you want to use them in the shader editor, you, well, we need to go into here. And in this case, because these are instances, I have to switch this to instancer. But if it's geometry that you set the attributes to, you just set this to geometry, and then you'll be able to see the, the data. So that's how you bring the attributes you set in geometry nodes over to the shader editor, where you could use them for your, you know, the, the shaders, like what I'm doing with the balloons. Very, very nice. Okay. I should make it so that the balloons delete when they get, you know, too far. But it's fine. Okay, why don't you make a short film? Uh, because it takes way too much time and effort and I don't feel like committing that much to it. Because, uh, yeah. I do geometry nodes because it's what, you know, I'm enjoying. I'm, I'm doing stuff that uh, normally you can't do. And it's very, it's fun. Fun and a little on, oh wait, I need to add in like a little drop shadow. Well, I could do that. Let me just, uh, or no, not new. I need to have another balloons thing. I just need to set this to, okay, wait, 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 wait. Balloon plus, now I need to copy this, bring it down, assign. So I'll delete all of this for the shadow. And then I'll just put in the alpha and but that works. Or I'll make this alpha blend so that and then multiply this so that there we go. I need to make this black as well. And then let's move this down a bit. That yeah, looks like there's some Yep, some shadow. Is that how the stuff looks in game? I don't know. It just it looks better to me, so there we go. And actually, maybe I should add shadows to everything. Loon shadow. Shadow, dart shadow. I don't think the darts need shadows. Maybe the monkeys. Let's label this just monkey. Monkey, here we go. Monkey, uh, monkey. Now I'll just keep that as monkeys, and I'll just label this dart monkeys like I had. Monkey. There we go, okay, I'll have that, and then I'll do that. Switch this to monkeys plus monkey shadow. Oop. I need to change that from plural to singular. So let's go and make sure I assign this to the monkey. Oop. No, to the copy. Let's bring that down and just bring it over a little bit. Oh, but that's gonna rotate with the. Uh, well, let, let's see if it works. It does. It, it's not necessary entirely.
buff in the Shadow Edge. Oh, that's... Uh, since that's a... Since this is a texture that I'm not blurring, that would be very difficult to do. Alpha Blend. There we go. Yeah, so we can see that the shadow uh, rotates with the monkey, which isn't what we want. just make this big. That's more of like a little outline. Oh yeah. I think I remember balloons having, you know, just an outline for those monkeys. That's also lower. Yeah, that's lowered enough. There we go. Your accent is British. Are you British? Uh, my accent is very much not British. So, no, I am, I'm not British. I do hang out with British folks fairly often. Curtis Holt. But, uh, yeah, not British. I'm very much, uh, American. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of what else to, to make this. Let's subdivide that. Blur node. Uh, there is no blur node in the shader editor. There is in geometry nodes, but that's the blur attributes. It's called the blur attribute node, not the blur uh, texture node. There is no such thing. Because if I wanted to blur this, that's a very tall order to do procedurally. Now, if I just wanted to blur the texture, I could do that. But, uh, you can't really do that in the shader editor. <laughs> do I change this to... Oh, I should have made this 30 frames per second by default, because you guys are seeing a kind of choppy version. Well, I am. So if I switch this... There we go. That's better. You guys should have a much better frame rate <laughs> at the moment. Actually, I think the balloons are a little fast. Or, no, that, that'll be better for Twitter. Because, you know, people won't have to watch a super long video just to see everything. Oh, wait. I forgot. I can make it so that the balloons have different speeds depending on their health. Oh. Could do that. Right. So depending on their health, yeah, named attribute, health, map range, so that they get slower, um, depending on, yeah. Oh, this will be interesting. Or wait a second. Okay. So... I would need to store another... I would have to affect the age value with that. Okay, I'll set another attribute, which is distance. Yeah, okay. I need to add in another parameter for that. Okay. Okay, okay. So let's do that. I need, I'll need. i just copy this over, change it to float. I'll label this distance. There we go. There, into there, that, into that. I feed the age into the distance value. Let's uncouple that from there. Let's bring it over to here. And then I, whoop, what was that? Then I just put the distance value into, that needs also to be a flow. Feed the distance value into there. So we should see, oh wait. 
Oh yeah, and I need to actually plug that in. There we go. Now the balloons can go at different speeds depending on what is going on. But now it makes it too easy for the monkeys to win. Funny. Okay, let's uh, let's minimize. Oh, wait a second. Oh wait, I don't even need the age parameter in there. Okay, I could just feed this into there. Okay. Oh, I could eliminate the age parameter. Yeah. There we go. No age parameter needed. Like, I may need it in the future, but at the moment, unnecessary. There we go. It works uh, beautifully. Now the monkeys don't have any animation, which is a little unfortunate, but it's all right. Okay. Coming up on two hours, so this entire project with all the polish that I put on it took two hours to make. And all I all that really needs changing is the, the font over there. So let me let me switch that out for Why, why, why does the lettering act weird? I would assume that's just the font, but it's okay. I'll just, you know, scale, scale down a little bit. Okay, there we go, folks. Uh, I'll have this be under two, uh, under a two-hour stream. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I'm very happy this note setup worked. I'll show you. Let's see. I have just a little bit to show you what this is like. So here, I'll start over here. Here's this part. I'll give you a second. Here is this part, which let me put this into a frame. Control J. And here's this part and that part. I need to stop this before it hits uh, the, the other thing. So I'll just show you this in summary. This right here. So that's the balloons and then the darts. Here's that. And that. And then that. All right, everyone. Thank you all for watching. Sorry, I want to, I really want to stop this before it hits two hours. Thank you all for watching. I will see you next time. Oop, I'll leave you with the animation.